All right. So the topic of this next piece here, this next chapter is annuities and IRAs. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. And I know that some of you have been in classes where you already know what that is. Um, but I'm also guessing that a lot of you have absolutely no idea what that is. And so it's a little challenging to try to make sure that everybody's on the same page here before we get started. So before we get started, I think it's important to try to show you a few things about retirement um, that make it really important that you understand these things at this age. Uh, the truth is this, if you wait till you're my age, I don't think of myself as old, um, but if you're my age and you haven't done anything for retirement, you probably will not be able to have a comfortable retirement. Uh, the reality is if you don't start immediately um, upon that first time job, having a solid plan to set yourself up for retirement, it's probably not going to happen. Um, the average person has about a thousand dollars saved for retirement right now. And that's all ages across all working disciplines. So great. You might be in your mid fifties and you got a thousand dollars saved for retirement. Wonderful. What are you going to do? Retire for a week? Um, you know, you can see right there. Yeah. That person, they're going to be working until they die. And it's one thing if you choose that, a lot of people choose that and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, my goal is to make sure that you have that choice. Um, and unfortunately, that means we have to talk about retirement right now at the age you are right now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. OK, so I put together a really, really simple spreadsheet here. Um, and I wanted to deliberately to make it simple to show you that these are not difficult ideas. But the idea behind this spreadsheet right here just says, let's say that if you started at age 25, Okay. And you decided you were going to set aside $2,000 for retirement every year. Um, and I just picked that number. It's arbitrary, but it's something that should be doable. I mean, this is less than $200 a month. This isn't something that if you have a full-time job um, that is going to be challenging for the average person to do. The average person can do this by the age of 25. If you've got a college degree and a job that goes along with that, I, I would expect that this is doable for most people. What would happen if you could save at 8% every year from 25 all the way up to 65? What would happen? So the way I built the spreadsheet, real simple. Okay, so you put aside at the very end of year uh, of the year in which you turn 25, you put aside $2,000. We go through a year and you put aside another $2,000. So you have $4,000 in contributions and you earned 8% on the 2,000 you put in last year. That's 160. Uh, so that means for this year, I just took this, added it, and then I just took this times 8% and added another 2,000. And I just chained that out. I just dragged it out all the way out to year 65. And then I took what we have in this age 65 box and I put it right over here at the beginning. So just so you could see it right on the front page. And once you've done that, you can start to make some changes to this spreadsheet and see what would happen if you saved more, if your interest rate was different. Um, the first thing that I want to show you um, is I want you to think about how much of this 560 some thousand dollars, how much of that was actual contributions by you? You started at age 25 and you went till age 65. That's actually 41 contributions. Um, but the point is the same. All right. You made 41 $2,000 contributions. So 82,000 of this 560 some thousand is money that you set aside. Where did the other $480,000 come from? Yeah, that's the growth of compound interest. There's a reason that Einstein called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. Um, think about that. You put aside $80,000 and you ended up with $560,000. Crazy, right? It's all because of the interest. Okay, so you start to look at that and you say, wow, it isn't that important that I put aside a bunch of money. The important thing is the time because interest is an exponential right? It grows exponentially and it increases at an increasing rate. So what's really important is that you have a long time for this stuff to compound, right? If you've done anything with time value of money on present and future value of annuities, you already know this. Small changes in interest rates over long periods of time make a huge difference. Let me show you. What if um, you didn't get, well, let me, let me change something first. Let's, let's move this contribution up a little bit. Let's say you set aside $300 a month. 
$300 a month times 12, that's 3,600 a year, okay? So here I've got this uh, worksheet here and you can see if you could do $300 a month consistently from age 25 to age 65, assuming you could earn 8%, that's the long run average in the stock market. Um, I don't think that's uh, an absurd number to use. I think it's reasonable. Um, if you could do that, you'd have just over a million dollars at age 65, whether you wanted to retire at age 65 or not, whether or not that would be enough, you'd have to give some thought to. A couple of things I want to show you. What if instead of waiting till age 25, what if you did this right away at age 22 when you got out of college? Uh, for the traditional age folks who, who got out of college. What if you did this at age 22? Well, I can use my spreadsheet here. Starting at 22 would be the same thing as going until 68. So I can cheat, right? So I can drag this out three more columns. And that would be 65, 60, that would be 66, 67, 68, which would be the same as starting at age 22 and going to 65, right? So instead of having 1 million, you'd have almost 1.3 million just by working those three additional years. So it's super critical to start early. That's my point. Um, and that's why people say, why do we have to talk about retirement? I'm only in my 20s. It doesn't even make sense. I haven't even started my job yet. You want to think about retirement? Yeah, this is why I want you to think about retirement. Because if you start early, it makes a huge difference. Uh, what happens if we start late? We say, hey, look, I want to spend my 20s having fun. Um, I get it. Okay. You know, you, you, you have learned a really valuable skill so far, and you probably don't think of it as a skill. It is a skill to know how to learn how to live on nothing. Um, and most of you have learned how to survive on very little. Don't forget that. And then when you start using this to set aside money for retirement, uh, you'll be able to set aside more. And that just makes it more likely that you'll be able to have the choice. Do I want to continue to work or not? Or do I want to relax? Um, the only way you're going to be able to relax is by living below your means and setting aside the difference and letting compound interest work for you. So many people do it the other way. They're borrowing money. That's making compound interest work against you. Credit cards, they're deadly because they're charging, they're, that's not 8%, they're charging 18%. If you're paying the minimum payment on credit cards, you will never be able to be comfortable. Uh, everything you buy is absurdly expensive when you, when you do it that way. So I wanted to show you, well, what happens if you say, hey, I don't need to start when I'm 25. I'm going to wait till I'm 35. I get it. You say you want to spend your 20s and have some fun, spend some money, have some, make some memories, have some good times. There's nothing wrong with that. But here's what you're trading off. So if you were to start at 35 instead of 25, using this spreadsheet, I could say if you start at 35, that's like going from 25 to 55 instead of 35 from 65. That's the same thing, right? So I've already done the work. I don't have to redo anything. Uh, we're going to start at age 35 and we're going to go until uh, age 65, which means we need to go from 25 to 55. That's the same thing as starting at age 35. So let's go to 55 and see what we got. All right. You've got uh, 444,000. Look at this. That extra 10 years of compounding gives you half of your total balance. So if you want to wait till 35, that's fine. You're going to have half of what you could have. Um, that that those first 10 years give you, they, they double the amount that will be available for you at retirement. It's huge. What if you say to my, yourself, wow, well, what would be the impact if I could just save an extra 100 bucks a month? So I could save an extra 100 bucks a month for retirement. What would that look like? Um, well, $100 a month is $1,200 a year. And again, we're assuming 8%. Um, if you could save an extra 100 bucks a month, every extra $100 a month you can save is going to mean 336000 some dollars at retirement, if you think of it that way. This is how Warren Buffett got rich. He realized when he wastes a hundred bucks a month, he's not wasting a hundred bucks a month. He's wasting $330,000 over 40 years. Um, that power of compound interest is incredible. Um, and when you start to think about things that way, you'll make different spending decisions. I bet if I asked any of you, could you save if you had to, could you save a hundred bucks a month? I bet most of you would say you could, if you could, you're not saving 100 bucks a month. You're saving $330,000 towards retirement. So if you're going to spend an extra 100 bucks a month on a car, you know, you're going to borrow a little bit more, get a little bit nicer car. Hey, that's great. It better be a Bentley. That's all I'm saying. Because what you're really giving up is $330,000 at retirement. So as, if you're getting a $330,000 car, all right, I guess that's fair. Um, but if you're not, you really might want to think about it. I hate to pick on the car. 
but there's so many people who make extravagant choices when when you think about what a vehicle really is you know it's just a way from to get you from one place to another it's incredibly expensive um, a lot of people have 400 a month car payments that means you're paying you know 15 bucks a day just for the privilege of owning the car um and that it's not that uncommon um, and then in these times, you know, I, I can go a couple of weeks without even driving my car. It's horribly expensive to own this thing uh, that I can't even use. Don't mean to pick on it, but that might be a place where you could save a hundred bucks a month. And the trade-off is you'd have another three hundred thousand dollars at retirement. Okay, let me go back to the scenario we were talking about that gave us just over a million. Um, it's very sensitive to the interest rate. What would happen if I could if I only got six percent instead of eight percent? Could happen. You don't know. Um, I just want to show you, um, not that you're going to know, but in your mind to be thinking about what's going to happen to this million dollar number here if we go down two points. Well, that's what happens. It cuts it uh, by about 40 percent. It's huge. Um, so small changes in the interest rate make a difference. So what does that mean? Well, there's lots of retirement funds that will charge you money up front for the privilege of investing with them. You can usually get the same performance somewhere else for free. Um, index funds are usually cheap. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, you're not paying anybody to manage your money because they're just trying to match an index. You might be able to get 2% more on that side, on the sales charges, on the operation charges, on um, the investment management fees that you have to pay. What if you could get, okay, so 8% was our base case that we started with. What if you could get 10%? It goes the other way too. Whoops, didn't like that. There. So instead of having just over a million, you almost got 1.8 million. You've got almost double now, uh, just from a two point change in the interest rate. So the interest rate matters. Giving up 1% to whoever's managing your retirement assets, um, are they delivering almost double the results? Because it's huge. You're giving up a lot. Um, okay. Well, this file is something you could play around with forever and, and give you whatever you want. I'm just trying to impress uh, some really important things on you, which is number one, it's the interest that matters. And that means you have to start early. Um, that's the big idea that I'm trying to get across. It's probably the most important thing I'm going to say to you all semester. Uh, have a plan for when you start uh, to work that you're immediately going to start saving for retirement. Max out what your employer is going to do to help you. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those things as we go. So, all right, that's the uh, introduction to why retirement is important to be thinking about as somebody who's in their 20s. Um, and I can't do it any better than that. If you don't believe me from that, then there, there isn't anything I can do. Um, but this uh, unit that we're talking about, annuities and IRAs, these are retirement topics. So that's why it's important to say, you know, I'm trying to cut off the person who says, why do we have to talk about any of this stuff? I'm so far from retirement. I can't even think about that. You really need to be thinking about that now because it's the difference between having the option to retire. Uh, and we're going to see this. You watch. There's going to be a lot of people who are just not going to have the option to retire. And in terms of enjoyment of life, um, it, again, there's nothing wrong with working until you die as long as you choose to do that. Um, but if you're forced to do it, I, I don't think that's going to be optimal in terms of happiness. So in this chapter, we got to talk about life annuities. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different types, a whole bunch of different features. We'll get a chance to talk about those. And then we'll talk about traditional and Roth IRAs. So before I go any farther, I, I got to frame this up a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and open a Word document here so we can talk about some of these things. Um, okay, so these all have to do with how are you going to save for retirement? What vehicles are you going to use? So I'm going to say this. These are ways to save for retirement. And I'm going to rank them. Uh, the first way and usually the best way is whatever your employer offers. Start there. You want to start with your employer-sponsored plan. Why is it first? A lot of times your employer will match the money that you'll put in. And that's free money. Um, you know, that's a hundred, a lot, if it's a dollar for dollar match, in other words, I put aside a thousand, they'll match it with a thousand. That's a hundred percent return on investment. Find me an investment that's better than that. You can't. Um, so that's going to be your first choice. Does your employer match at all? Max that out, whatever they do. That's the first thing you want to do. Um, maybe you don't have an employer sponsored plan. Uh, well, that's fine. Then you can use an individual retirement account. Um, and we'll talk about that in this chapter. We have two types. We have a traditional 
IRA, or we have what's called a Roth IRA. And the difference is they both have tax advantages. It's in the timing of the tax advantage. Do you get that today or do you get it when you retire? It's the only difference. Um, so that's uh, your second option if your employer, if you've maxed it out, or if your employer doesn't have anything. Um, you can save on your own and get some tax advantages through an individual retirement account, uh, which is called an IRA. Then if you've maxed that out and you still have a way to go, um, we might want to think about what we're going to call a de deferred annuity. And we haven't talked about this yet. This has a little bit of tax advantage on the growth side. So it's not as good as the IRA. The IRA has a tax advantage on the front end or the back end and your investments while they're in there, they grow tax-free. With a deferred annuity, you don't have a tax advantage on the front or the back, but it does grow tax-free and that's an advantage. Um, the last thing you, you can do, you don't need any special accounts. You don't need to do anything. You can just save. And we call those open taxable investments. So you can just put money in a bank, have a savings account, let it build at interest. Simple, right? You don't have to do anything fancy. Um, you could open an, an account at a brokerage if you want to invest in stocks. You could save your money, make your picks and let it go. It's just that along the way, uh, you'll have to pay income taxes on interest and then capital gains tax any times you buy or sell. If you're within an IRA, an employer plan or a deferred annuity, you can buy and sell with no tax implication. Um, and that's the advantage there. So normally we rank them this way and we say, these are your choices for saving for retirement. These are the vehicles you use. So uh, you really have two decisions that you have to make. The first decision is how much are you going to save? And then your second decision is what investments are you going to choose? Um, I, I find it difficult for people who've never been exposed to this before. You, you talk about an IRA account, they just don't get it. All right, you're going to set aside some money in an IRA account. That's your first decision. I'm going to set aside $2,000 this year. Okay, great. What do you want to invest those $2,000 in? You could invest in a specific company. Um, you you might, maybe you're a Tesla person. I'm uh, I, sorry, I don't want to get too far into the opinions here, uh, but that's a, a stock that has priced in some pretty wild expectations for how they expect things to go. Uh, that's the kindest way I can say it. Uh, another way to say it is it's massively overvalued based on the reality on the ground today. Um, but some people really think that that's going to continue. They might be right. I could be wrong. I'll admit it. Um, but right now, looking at earnings, uh, the price that people are paying for Tesla assumes that there's going to be some really big earnings coming in the future. And nobody can really prove uh, exactly where that's coming from. So that's, there's a belief out there that that's going to happen. Maybe that's what you want to invest in. Great. You can put your money in, in that stock. Maybe you want to spread it out a little more. Maybe you have four or five different companies that you're high on. Great. You can do that. Um, maybe you say, you know what? I'm not much of a stock picker, but I think the market over time is going to do fine. Uh, well, then we use an index fund. So we might take what's called the S&P 500, the 500 uh, companies that make up that index, and we'll invest a little bit in each one. And we can do this at small amounts of, of money. I mean, you can put in $500 and say, yep, I want it in the S&P 500 index. They'll do the splitting for you. Now you're diversified. So if one or two companies go bankrupt, that's no problem. In the other model, if you chose five companies and two of them went out of business, that's really going to hurt your return. I was assuming you were going to get 8%. If people are going out of business, you're not going to get 8%. So anyway, uh, that's a, a long explanation. Um, of where we're going in the class, but it should be a little bit helpful if you're thinking about retirement and you knew nothing to begin with. Um, anyway, I wanted to get back then to the slides, which are going to talk about the second and the third method in here mostly. We're going to talk about deferred annuities, and then we're going to talk about individual retirement accounts. This is actually a really decent place to take a break. Um, given how much time I spent talking already. When we come back next time, we're going to talk about annuities, what we're trying to do with those, and we'll talk about all the different types, and then we'll hit IRAs, and we'll go from there. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. You got questions, let me know. I love talking retirement. So if you have specific questions about that, let me know. We'll chat. It'll be fun for me. <laughs> we'll go from there. Thanks a lot, you guys.